Hello and welcome to this film which is about the effect of catalysts on equilibrium systems. I um, don't want to spoil the ending of it for you but um, the take home message is very much the fact that catalysts affect the rate of reactions but they don't affect the yield of equilibrium systems. In other words they don't affect the position of equilibrium. Okay, so we're going to use collision theory to explain why that is and that's basically what this film is about. Okay, so let's once again look at the energy changes that might happen in a reaction. Okay, here I'm looking at um, a set of reactants that can turn into products. Okay, and what we've got here is we've got marked in red the activation energy. That's the activation energy for the forward reaction. But I could equally well mark on this graph the activation energy for the backward reaction. So if we're assuming that the reactants can turn into products but the products can turn back again okay then we've got two activation energies for the red line we've got the activation energy for the backward process and for the forward process okay now this green line here this shows what the reaction profile looks like when you do add a catalyst okay so we know that catalysts provide an alternative route for the reaction and that that uh, root will normally have a lower activation energy. The activation energy for the forward reaction will be lower, but of course that means that the activation energy for the backward reaction will also be lower. Okay, so I've made a little bit of a mess of that diagram, but hopefully that demonstrates the fact that if we add a catalyst, both reactions will have lower activation energies, and therefore a greater proportion of particles will have enough energy to react in both directions. Let's have a look at that statement I've just said about the proportion of particles using a Boltzmann energy ener if I can say it a Boltzmann energy distribution curve. Okay, so this curve, which we've seen before many times, this shows the distribution of molecular energies in a sample. So here's our most popular energy, and here are some energies which aren't so popular because not many particles have those energies, but here is our original activation energy, which unfortunately is labelled in green on this diagram, whereas before it was red. Here's our new one. This is when we've added a catalyst, so this activation energy is with the catalyst, whereas this one was without the catalyst. And remember, what we can say here by looking at the graph is that because the area under the curve has increased here, or the area under the curve to the right of the necessary energy has increased, that means there's a greater proportion of particles with enough energy to react. Okay, So as a catalyst is added, there's a greater proportion of particles with enough energy to react. Therefore, a greater number or a greater percentage of the collisions between particles will be successful and lead to reactions. Okay, But this applies just as much for the forward process as it does for the backward process. Okay, So remember, here is the, the kind of the, the anticlimactic... Um, punchline for this film and that is that although catalysts speed up reactions they don't have any effect on the position of equilibrium because the forward and backward reactions will both be sped up and they'll both be sped up by the same amount. Okay so the last film in this series just basically looks at the rate time and concentration time graphs for these changes that we've just discussed here so that's probably a good place to go to next.